Unplugged Health series podcast radio show. Welcome back. A bit impromptu. So what was the topic we were saying about? Um, Insulin resistance. Well, glucose management. some of the things known are some of the concepts I think that we want to incorporate and we've asked, been asked by our kind followers to uh, cover. Some of the things we're going to talk about is insulin resistance. And then it struck me thinking, okay, how much, how much do people understand what insulin resistance is? And why is it so important? And why in the last, I don't know, 10, 15 years has, has more and more about insulin resistance, not even blood sugar levels, but insulin resistance per se being spoken about. It's a bit like the gut biome, you know, it was gut health and then it's, yeah. it's the bacteria and then it's yeah. microbiome. So uh, you've done a lot of glucose management. Yep. How would you, if you have a client who says, well, you keep, you know, talking about insulin resistance. Well, insulin resistance 101 for dummies. How would, you, how do you explain it? What do you? I explain, if it's a married couple, I explain Ooh. the wife, if I'm speaking <laughs> to the wife. make this easier. If I'm explaining it to the wife, right, you'll like this one. Well, you might like it from the husband's perspective as well, but um, I explain it basically like, if your husband is telling you to do something, you might do it the first, first couple of times, but eventually he'll do it and do, tell you and tell you and tell you, and eventually it will so just really literally just get lost. And it, it, it'll just Very be good. a noise. And when, when we're digesting food, your body has to, um, you have to release insulin to grab the sugar from that food to take it into the storage sites. Yeah. And the more we tell it to do that, the more it just turns into noise yeah. and it isn't able to do it as effectively. And the more, the louder, and, and they keep shouting, louder, shouting, louder, shouting, shouting, someone shouts, and, gets angry and eventually and... some gets more, but all that, all the body can do is try and pump more and more insulin um, to shout further and further yeah. to get the, because, so the, the importance of the insulin is to get the glucose from the blood into um, the cells to be used as energy with oxygen. Yeah. So it, it, it has to shout harder, but eventually even the best wife goes, you know what? I'm done. I'm done. I'm going to stop shouting. I'm it's not making any mean. difference. Yeah. And that's the most dangerous part of any relationship. And I love it. I get it. Yeah. I'm, I'm, that was, I don't know where you were going there once, but at the beginning, but I, li I really like that because it eventually the pancreas, the worst scenario is the pancreas gives up or burns out, but all that happens, your body gets flooded with insulin, it's not getting absorbed, so blood sugar goes up. Mm -hmm. And uh, so when we talk along the lines of more holistic approach to overall health, the impact of uncontrolled, unregulated glucose management throws everything out. Yeah. There's not really a system that I've read about where insulin resistance or the impact of poor poor glucose management is um, is not playing a role. We've got someone coming in. Just bear with us one moment. Alright. Oh yes, thank you. This is how you know it's live. It's live. Delivery. Don't, don't edit that bit out. As I said, I'm plugged. Yeah, so when, when we look at insulin resistance, we look at glucose management. I think it's important to note that any food is going to spike your glucose up a tiny bit at least. Yeah. Even protein, even fat, a little bit. But it's when we have this big spike of sugar from a lot of processed foods, that's when we have to release more insulin. Yeah. So it grabs that sugar to pull it down, take it out of the blood, because in the blood is a toxic substance, to take it into cells, to take it into storage sites where it's not going to be harmful or it's going to be used for energy. Now, the more we keep spiking our sugar levels, the more those messages to get the insulin and it gets tired, as we said, it gets worn out. That's when it stops doing it. And that's when we start having issues. We start needing to supplement have supplemental insulin when you look at like medication yeah. for, for type 2 diabetics obviously type 1 that we're not going to be able to reverse that that that's a different condition and the interesting the thing with a lot of the medications it increases the uh, receptor or the listening power of the receptor yeah. but if you don't understand the mechanisms why that's happening you're just carrying on um a, you know shouting that the system is still going to happen. So all that happens is, oh, we need to increase the dosage. 
or change in their medication, go into stronger stuff. But the un uncontrolled blood sugar levels is hugely detrimental on, on many, many systems. Um, most notably, people will identify glucose with eventually potentially diabetes, but it's now been associated with anything through di from dimen dementia to uh, hormonal like issues that we've Parkinson's yeah. like 10, 15 years before. Well, they even regarding dementia that is like type three. the, third, the yeah. third diabetes. So the impact on that is, is huge. And I think this is crucial if, if you look at, we, we say about genetics and genetics load the gun, they don't pull the trigger to your environment and lifestyle that pulls the trigger. But if you have Alzheimer's, if you have dementia, if you have these things in your family and you are living on this roller coaster of blood sugar mismanagement, then that is definitely something that I would want to be looking at and checking now yeah. in, in 40s, 50s and 60s rather than... I mean, when, when you have dementia, you're not the one that's suffering necessarily. Yeah. It's, it's your family. And that's why they're referring to it as like the third diabetes, isn't yeah. it? Because it's, it, we know that type 2 diabetes is very much lifestyle based. Yeah. So they're trying to get the message through that some of these things, there may be a genetic trend or a, um, a susceptibility, but there's a lot of environmental factors. You know, the cool thing about that is that we weren't told that it was preventable before. But now we're seeing ways that we can prevent. Yeah. And and seeing my granddad died of Alzheimer's, my nan had dementia. Like seeing someone you love going through that and knowing that it could be prevented. But I want to do the things to help my uh, my family and, and my friends and to people know that they can improve their health yeah. if they've and, got it in and, their family. And therefore, something as the simple as that's why I wanted to bring it up is that the concept of insulin resistance has such significant impacts on multiple systems. So someone might link onto and listen to this at about dementia. Another person might be from cardiovascular health. Maybe it is from diabetes. Um, maybe it is from a hormonal perspective. Maybe it's from a weight perspective. The, the impact of managing uh, blood sugar levels, it goes beyond just I eat something with sugar in or not. It's managing because then we would go into things like cortisol levels, yep. sleep, you know, the things that we and keep, we keep mentioning. Well. Yep. These all impact of how effectively your body controls um, insulin resistance. So the, the topics of what's coming through when you're reading uh, papers like Ollie and I like to do and you start listening to different speakers, they're not talking about managing glucose levels now. They're talking about insulin resistance. Yeah. And so you've got concepts like your fasting, intermittent fasting, because there's elements also we were, I remember um, in my early studies way too long ago, the idea was six, six, small, meals, six small meals a day, keep your blood sugar levels nice and, and this constant. Yeah. Now it's like, actually, you know what, we need to go back to actually having times when our blood sugar levels drop and low enough because that improves sensitivity. That means when the body needs insulin, it's only going to have a little bit and it'll react. The problem so is it's training. That we've actually out -trained, uh, trained the body to be less sensitive to insulin. The problem is, is that because people's blood glucose management is poor, this then leads to a dip. And we live in this stressful lifestyle anyway. And then what's, what's the thing or some of the things that boost it? Cortisol, yeah. growth hormone boosts it epinephrine like adrenaline noradrenaline like these stressful things boost so when when we have this drop in in sugar in blood glucose which usually happens through the night that's when cortisol gets boosted we also have a cortisol awakening response in the morning which yeah. we need and that wakes us up at the night so when people are waking up two three times to go to the toilet they're thinking oh i've just got a weak bladder but actually are we waking up to go to the toilet or are we going to the toilet because we've woken up it's usually because you're woken up, you should be able to hold yourself. And I, I think that that's, I was asked on Friday at a talk, what are the things, what, what's the number one thing I deal with in, in my clinic? And that is dealing with blood sugar management through yeah, waking it up. It is very much night. a window into how someone's, how someone's running their life, how yeah. their life has been run. Yeah. Well, on top of them, Getting you know, because it gives you the impact of cortisol and stress hormones. So it's not only just, I mean, diet is huge mm -hmm. because that impacts so much, but um, that again, that ability to, I'm thriving versus testing and then knowing knowing what's going on with, with blood sugar levels gives us an insight into perhaps um, uh, 
stress hormones yeah. and insulin resistance. And you can test with glucose as well. You can get the free cell levers, the patches. If, if anyone's used something like Zoe, they just give you freestyle Libra patches for like double the price. So um, get them direct from, from Abbott's from Freestyle Libra. You can do finger prick tests, but do we even need to test? Because if you've got signs, if, if you're getting brain fog, if you're getting hangry between meals, if you're getting any, um, energy dips in the afternoon, if you're finding that you're craving sugars after food, yeah. these are signs of glucose issues, waking up during the night. But if you can then keep your protein consistent through the day, have a look at the processed carbohydrates you're having and maybe minimize them a little bit or always have protein. Do you fats. put much emphasis on the glycemic index scale? No. Because, because that's, that came about by that concept of, you know, and say going way back my day of, of people going, oh, well, you know, you want to keep your glucose levels nice and steady through the day. So, you know, go for the foods which have a low, low index. And that's where people like swear by rice, people hate rice, people swear by potatoes. This is where the white rice and brown rice debate comes in. It's like white rice, white rice, white, white rice. rice. And then Jonathan Wasp, white <laughs> rice, white rice is a higher glycemic index than brown rice. But a lot of people can't digest the husk of brown rice. And also the husk of, the, of brown rice is designed if you were a bird, you eat the, the seed, yep. and the husk is what irritates yeah. the gut, yeah. so it goes through and get, comes out as poop yeah. quickly, so therefore it germinates. So, yeah. so, and, uh, it so gets happens, You can see why people get confused. But with the, the glycemic index, I, I think it's important to know is that that's based on the food on its own, right? That's yeah. if you eat white rice on its own and brown rice on its own, that, that's where their numbers are. And you're never going to eat that really yeah. on its own. There's going to be protein in it. That's going to... And that's a glycemic index of the whole meal, right? Yeah. And then you've got load as well, like glycemic load, all that when sort of stuff. Yeah. I, I found when I started playing more and more interest in, in these, I kind of almost went, okay, I say to some people, how do you, what's your gut feel? How do you feel when you eat it? How do you feel after two hours after you eating it? How do you feel that night? How do you feel the next day? If you're waking up the next day with a hangover, and you're feeling rubbish. Why oh, this the, the other week we had a weekend where you know we had some some lots a lot more kind of sugary foods. It was lovely. We had we had treats and all sorts. The next day I woke up feeling like I'd been drinking, and I was like, you know what? I wish I had, because at least I would have had some. I had a, I had a hangover, That's how but not from alcohol. Man United, though. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we won't. We don't have to talk about that recently. That's more hangover with a roller coaster, right? Yeah, yeah. But it is. Uh, but it's, it's all about. Body. I, so I hopefully we have in a roundabout way explained a bit of of insulin resistance. Some relationship therapy. Yeah, and um, and don't do a podcast during the day when something's when, being when the is post. But hey, it's unplugged. So um, if there's any questions about uh, insulin resistance, if we've explained it, I, um, I think that was really, I'm quite, I'm quite impressed, mate. I don't know, I really was thinking, are we going to be starting this podcast again? Don't tell Laura, my wife. Yeah. So uh, is that from personal it. experience? She inspired it. She's telling me to do something. They're telling me, insulin resistance. Insulin resistance. So um, yeah, hopefully some food for thought and some ideas and uh, some concepts because down the line we are going to be talking a bit more hormones mm -hmm. and the influence of hormones and performance and uh, insulin resistance will certainly come up. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. So hopefully people understand insulin resistance more so than just uh, managing glucose where a lot of people tend to think then glucose equals sugar. Okay, dogs. Done? I need enough new tea now. On that note, take care guys, we'll see you then, speak soon.